Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, OP and his wife met in college, where she initially approached him despite his intention to avoid relationships. Over time, she became more confident and social. One day, he caught her secretly meeting his old roommate. Suspecting infidelity, he confirmed it, leading to their divorce. Now, let's get into the story. My wife, 29 female, and I, 29 male, met while we were in college. She was extremely sweet and meek, but she was actually the one to approach me after a class we shared together. She asked me out to dinner and said it was her treat. My original plan was not to start any relationships in college. I wanted to graduate without distractions, but I decided to go out with her and use my best judgment. I honestly would have been surprised if I knew then how much I would fall for her. She was so kind, sweet, and shy. She didn't have social media apps, and she was extremely book smart. She was pretty plump, but she looked really good. I wasn't in it for looks though, I knew better than to fall for any basic woman. At dinner, we really hit it off. We had a lot in common, and she seemed down to earth. I asked her out on a second date, and the rest is history. Eventually, she started hanging out with me in my dorm, and it was only a matter of time before she met my roommate. She was only shy around him, staying close to me, me whenever he was there. We would occasionally go out with a group of friends to have some fun. And the longer we spent together, the more she opened up to the friends we socialized with. She started to find her circle and connect with other women. That's when she joined a social app and added virtual friends. Around the same time, she started working out. At this point, we'd been in a serious relationship for three years and we graduated. We got married around the same time my wife reached her goal weight. Her confidence and number of friends had tripled since the day she met me. I loved her with all my heart, and I was ready to be with her, and only her for the rest of my life. She said she felt the same. After work one day, I made plans to meet my brother at a bar. I was under the impression that my wife was at home. As soon as I walked in the place, I spotted my wife. She was sitting at a table with my roommate from college. I hadn't spoken to him since before we graduated. I didn't even look for my brother, I just walked straight over to them. When my wife looked at me, her expression turned to humiliation. But within a moment, it changed to calm and defensive, like she already had a plan to explain all this away. I was right because as soon as I asked what the heck was going on, she said they were just two friends out for a drink to catch up. My roommate could hardly look at me. He was trying to copy her calm expression, but he wasn't very good at it. I asked him to explain this and he just shrugged and tried to play it off like she asked him to meet up with her as old friends. I wasn't buying it. I asked how often they messaged each other, and she was quick to tell me that it had been at least a year since they spoke. AP looked guilty and tried to play dumb while he agreed with her. This just didn't feel right. Then my wife tried to say I was jealous and insecure because she would never do anything to betray the sanctity of our marriage. My brother approached the table and asked if everything was okay. I told him it wasn't, and I'd have to meet up with him another day because I needed to take my wife home. She was beside herself, extremely upset and irritated with me and the whole situation, but she still grabbed her purse and apologized to AP before getting up and leaving with me. At home, we had a big fight because she really believed I was at fault for not wanting her to meet up with AP without telling me. I asked her to give me her phone, and that's when things went bad. She started packing a bag, dramatically, like my request was the last straw. Just before it was filled, she broke down crying without a word from me. She asked me why we had to do this, and I told her it was because she wouldn't see things my way. My way being that, hanging out with my old roommate behind my back and refusing to show me her phone was unacceptable. She finished packing, making sure her phone was in her back pocket before telling me she was going to stay at her aunt's house. I told her if she left, it would most likely be because she was at home. 
most likely be the end of our marriage because I didn't believe she was really going there. She was just appalled, but still refused to give me her phone. And so she felt like she had no choice but to leave. 20 minutes later, I drove to her aunt's house and she was not there. Her aunt had no idea what I was talking about or where my wife would be. I sat in the car on my phone and looked at my old roommate. I messaged one of our mutual friends from college and asked if he knew where AP moved to. I explained some of the situation and that was enough for him to give me his address. My wife's car was parked outside when I got there. I was about to knock on the front door, but I heard noises from the backyard. The house was surrounded by dense woods. It felt like my heart was about to explode when I saw them having intimate. There was an in-ground hot tub right beside them, so I ran up at full speed and shoved AP into it. I thought about grabbing my wife and dragging her back to the car, but I had a moment of clarity. She chose to come here and cheat on me, instead of giving me her phone and admitting what had been going on. This was more than enough of a reason never to speak to her again. I decided I'd done enough and found out what I needed to know. She was absolutely shocked and hysterical. She wasn't really crying tears, but she tried to sound like she was upset or crying. She asked me what the heck I was doing. As soon as I started walking back to my car, she screamed for me to stop and come talk to her. She actually wanted me to talk to her about how I just caught her cheating on me. I spotted her keys laying on a chair and quickly took her house key. I left her there, screaming my name. I filed for divorce and refused to speak a word to her. The best part of this whole story is that she tried to continually sleep over AP's house, but after a few days, he kicked her out and said he didn't see their relationship going anywhere. It started while she was married, so it's foolish to believe that that could become anything serious or worthy of trust. Since he didn't want her anymore, she went to her aunt's for real this time. Her aunt was furious with her, reprimanding her like she was a child, in person, and on social media. It was only 11 months later that my ex announced she was expecting her first child. She was not in a serious relationship and still isn't. It's been five years since our divorce was final and I have remarried. My wife doesn't even have a smartphone because she doesn't want to be sucked into this warped perception of reality that modern women have today. They don't know a good match when they meet one and they are always willing to trade up as soon as they get bored. My wife knows this and refuses to do that to me. She wants to live a life comparable to her grandmother, and I admire her for that. Today's second story. In this story, OP met his wife when she was his nurse after a surgery. They began dating and married within a year, and she often shared stories about her work. When she started making late night visits to a patient named Joyce, her behavior changed, leading to suspicion. He discovered her with a young man at a funeral and later learned she moved in with him. Now let's get into the story. I met my wife as a patient in the hospital. She was my nurse during my recovery from surgery. I just had a tumor removed and I was high on life. I felt like I'd been given a second chance and I wanted to make the most of it. When I met this angel of a nurse, I wanted to make her mine. I started flirting with her and when she flirted back, I gave her my number. I told her I wanted her to text me when she got home while I was stuck in the hospital. I was ecstatic when she did. On the day I was discharged, she was off the clock, but she still came by to bring me flowers. I asked her out to dinner and the rest is history. We got married within the same year. She was 27 and I was 30. It quickly became routine for her to tell me about the people she worked with and the patients she cared for without violating HIPAA, of course. My wife had told me many stories about this older woman named Joyce. She had a sense of humor that you wouldn't expect in an older woman and she was far too honest in some situations. Her brutal honesty made my wife laugh on more than one occasion. One day, my wife told me with tears in her eyes that Joyce was sent home to live with her grandson, the only family she had left until she would pass away. She told me she'd given Joyce's grandson her cell number, in case they needed help with anything. It was only two days later that my wife got a text from him an hour after she'd gotten home from work. She went back out the door, all too eager to help. When she'd been gone for hours, I finally decided to check the family locator app. She was at an address across town. I assumed where Joyce lived with her grandson. I texted her, 
asking if she would be home soon. She didn't reply, but shortly after that, her dots started traveling home. When she got there, I asked her why she didn't reply and what took so long. She played dumb like she didn't realize how long she took, and she seemed way too happy, couldn't downplay it. She tried to say that Joyce was really sick and needed her help to get comfortable and situated enough to reassure her grandson. I asked why she was so happy if Joyce was so sick and the smile vanished. She said they were good people and she liked being around them. I was suspicious that she did something else, something much better than taking care of a sick person. I asked her again why it took so long to get resituated and my wife snapped. She cussed called me impatient. She told me I needed to let her do her work and that she didn't need me to be waiting on her to get home either. She told me to go about my night whether she was home or not. Her words hurt. I told her I always looked forward to her nights together and that I hated it when she was called into work or forced to stay late at the hospital. I told her I hated when I didn't get to see her for more than a few hours a day. She told me she couldn't help that and I just have to deal with it. She was distant for a few weeks after that making at least three more house calls to the same address within that time. On the fourth weekend, since she snapped at me, she told me she was going to a funeral. I asked if it was for Joyce, and she hesitated before saying no that it was for another patient she didn't expect to pass. I asked for their name, and she quickly gave me one. I searched for the name in the obituaries while she was gone, but I only found one for me. I drove by the funeral being held for her, and saw my wife being caressed by a grieving young man. They appeared to be a romantic couple. My throat swelled up as I watched them from down the road. The young man gave an emotional speech, and I saw my wife give him a kiss on the cheek when he returned to her side. He put his arms snugly around her. They stayed practically against each other for the entire service until they got in a black car together and drove off. I checked the locator app but found that my wife had turned her off. I still drove to the address where she took care of Joyce. There I found the black car they were in, along with a bunch of old furniture and clutter covered up in the driveway. I knocked on the door hard, and it took several minutes for AP to answer. When he did, it looked like he just threw on a shirt and sweatpants to answer the door. I demanded to see my wife. AP looked worried like he knew who I was. My wife emerged, putting on her shoes. She started asking me what I was doing there and why I was spying on her. I caught her off guard when I asked her where her bra was because she clearly wasn't wearing one. She turned bright red and said she didn't wear one that day. I told her not to come home because I saw them acting like a married couple at the funeral. She immediately shut down. I could almost see the wheels in her head turning, realizing how bad this was. She didn't want to lose me or be kicked out of the house. Just then, AP told her she could move in with him. Him. She didn't look completely relieved, but she was empowered enough to agree and move out a few days later. For six months, I was in a dark place. I felt like she was getting away with breaking my heart and wasting years of my life. But then karma struck. AP's ex-wife called him when she got word that another woman had moved in. She wanted him to kick her out so she and the kids could move back in. When he broke the news to my ex and kicked her out, she lost it. She tried to contact me for months, leaving panicked voicemails on my phone that explained everything and proved how desperate she was. She even showed up at my house and waited around outside for me to come out or arrive home. I managed to avoid her until two days before our court date. She was ordered not to go back to the house and was also fired from her job at the hospital, probably because she was miserable and couldn't show up to work. She got to the lowest point in her life when she had to move in with a stranger she met online. So that's where she is now, and I don't see her getting out of it anytime soon. Today's third story. In this story, after nearly 20 years of marriage, OP discovers his wife has been cheating on him. Despite trying to maintain normalcy for their four children, he confronts her and files for divorce. As his wife faces social backlash, he focuses on his own well-being and his children's happiness, with no interest in rekindling romance. Now let's get into the story. My wife 48 and I 49 have been together for nearly 20 years, married for 19 of them. We have a total of four kids, two girls ages 18, 16, 
and two boys 15 and 12. This year will be our 20th anniversary, though it's safe to say that I am not in the mood to celebrating that event. I'll never be celebrating it at all. The cheating never should have come as a surprise, because my wife had been threatening to lead for a few years now. I take it in stride, let her say what she wanted, and then things would go back to normal for a while. This started way after our kids were born so for the sake of the kids, I just put up with it. My wife has always enjoyed spending time with her friends. At least once a week, she would go out drinking with them and come home late. I always enjoyed spending time with my kids and being at home with them anyway, so it didn't matter to me. Once upon a time, my wife used to like it, back when the kids were smaller, but at some point that changed. Again, it didn't matter to me because I loved being at home with them. It was this year that my wife started going out multiple times a week rather than just once. I didn't think much of it at first. All I thought was that since the kids were getting a lot older now, she just had even less interest in staying home with them. There were four of them, but I tried my best to be enough for them. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. One day I was contacted by a family member of my wife who confessed to me that my wife had been cheating on me for more than a year with a guy named Greg. They met at one of the clubs my wife frequented with her friends, though they have told me since that they had no idea it was happening. My wife was doing a great job of being secretive that not even her closest friends were able to figure it out. She hadn't confessed to this family member. Rather, they had spotted them kissing in a McDonald's parking lot. Classy I know. We might have not been very close. But she felt like it was important to confess the truth to me. When she got home from going out with her friends that night I confronted her with what her family member said. At first, there was the typical denial from her. Then when it became clear that I wasn't going to buy it, because this family member had no reason to lie to me, her demeanor changed to one of anger. What did you expect? She shouted. You never interested me and only paid attention to the kids. I admit that after a while of my wife being constantly hot and cold, I gave up and stopped trying. But what else would you expect? One could only be burned for so long before they stopped wanting to get hurt by the fire. For a few days after that, we didn't speak until I finally decided that I couldn't go through the motions anymore. Even for the sake of my kids, it wasn't very healthy for them anyway, something I realize now with therapy. So I told her I was officially filing for divorce. At first, she seemed thrilled that she was going to be free of everything. She could be free to continue with her relationship with this guy Greg, who I knew nothing about and didn't want to learn about either. It's what she probably wanted for years now. Why she didn't just bring it up to me, rather than string me along was beyond me. Friends and family seemed shocked by the news. I didn't say much about the situation, telling them nothing more than she stepped out of the marriage and I was seeking a divorce. Any questions they had they could send my wife's way. Let her deal with them. It's been a couple of months since DDA and I'm not going to lie, it was difficult to get to a point where I was no longer struggling every day. Slowly, I started to climb out of my shell. I've lost 30 pounds and gotten back into working out. My kids also seem happier. That was probably the best thing to see. I should have realized how the tense environment between me and their mother was making them feel. All four of them didn't say as much, but it seemed like a weight off their shoulders. They had chosen to live and spend much of their time with me. My wife was fine with this in the beginning. Then the consequences of her actions started to make her newfound freedom seem not so free. We lived in a city, but our neighborhood was quite close-knit. My wife was always the more outgoing and friendly one, so she interacted with them more. However, after news of her cheating reached the block, they started to shun her. I honestly was surprised to see them cut her off and rally around me. She was always more of an active neighbor, yet despite that they were quick to give me whatever support they could give. Something interesting happened last week. My wife had come by to see the kids, which I allowed because I still wanted them to have a relationship with their mother. I walked the kids downstairs and saw my wife waiting outside the building. One of our neighbors walked by, one that my wife had been very close with. She said hello, and the neighbor completely ignored her. You the icing on the cake was that when she saw me and the kids, she said hello. My wife was red in the face from anger and embarrassment. She practically stormed away from the apartment with the kids trailing behind her, looking confused and a little embarrassed. I almost burst out laughing, 
even if it would have been pretty immature to do it. Not that I'd be blamed. Look at what my wife had done. I made sure to text them and check in to see if everything was going all right, because I was a little concerned with my wife's attitude. However, my eldest daughter assured me that everything was going all right. My wife wasn't taking anything out on them, so I could relax and be assured that they were going to have a good time. I've gotten the feeling that anytime she comes around to pick up the kids, this is going to happen. I don't feel anything towards her and certainly not one ounce of pity. My wife and hopefully ex-wife soon once everything is signed is the one who did all of this to herself, so she is the only one she can blame. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep focusing on me and the kids. I don't know if romance will ever be in the cards for me again, but that's a bridge I'll cross if I ever come to it. For now, the kids are my number one priority, something my wife never quite managed to learn in all the years we were married.